Well, good morning, folks. It is so nice to be, again, to be here with you. My parents aren't here simply because they have a funeral to go to, but they have promised me they will come to the next one. And don't worry, I will make them feel very guilty about missing this one today. Um, they do love coming to Catholic TV studios for this Mass. My friends, so when we're listening to uh, the Lugan Gospel, it's one of the three synoptic Gospels, and uh, there are some parts inside of it are very, it's all very rich, but some parts which are very unique. You know, in understanding Luke's Gospel or passage that's provided to us, it's always worthy of us to ask the question, you know, when we're listening to this, who is God, who is Jesus speaking to? What's the crowd that's with him? What's he telling them? And, you know, if there's the parable, what's the parable mean? And then if there's an instruction, what's the instruction that he's giving inside there? And so what we can pick up from today's gospel is that he is speaking to a group of uh, people who are Jews themselves and people who he's trying to seek to instruct them in the ways of the new gospel uh, that he's proclaiming himself. And he's speaking to them uh, and he gives them uh, this little parable because it's because of an interchange between a question and an answer. Uh, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. And Jesus kind of goes off there in a much different direction than I think the guy was expecting inside there. Uh, and we hear that parable he has of the rich man who has so much, uh, so much grain from his harvest that uh, the silos he has aren't big enough. And so he's now worried, what do I do with the over overflowing amount? In other words, he doesn't want to throw it away. So he says, well, I know what I'll do. I'll build another one. I'll put it inside there. And I got so much grain, I'm never going to have to worry about working again. And then God says to him, you fool, this day, your, this night, your life's going to be demanded of you. And so obviously, the man must have been very scared at that point. But he also had to real, realize how foolish he was in what he was doing himself. Look, it's a parable. Jesus is trying to give us an instruction inside here. And the instruction is man's folly. You know, we often get caught up with wealth, don't we? Oh my gosh, money drives us crazy. And I'm not talking from a pastor's perspective or a fundraising pastor's perspective or of the bills that I'm going to get from all those painters and plasterers this week. I'm not talking about that. You know, it's a funny thing. I have a friend, Sister Mary Catherine, and she's a Dominican nun down in Summit, New Jersey. And I'm visiting her. I get go with there a couple of times. When I go on retreat to New Jersey, I go when I visit her. But I remember her telling me they ex built this big, huge wing inside there, a cloister. They all live inside the cloister. And they, never, they don't leave the cloister. Uh, and they have so many young vocations inside there. They had to build this, build this expansion. But what they ended up with was having a surplus. Well, now... Who doesn't like, who doesn't not like having money, extra money in the bank, right? We all love extra money inside the bank. And then she said something that I felt like jumping up and putting a cross in front of her. And she says, oh, she says, no, she says, not good having extra money in the bank. There's so many other people who need something. There, there are other Dominican uh, nuns who need this in their comments. So we go off and we share. And I said, well, that's a, I think that's nice, but that's crazy what happens when, you know, the boiler goes or something. She says, you know, God provides. What? That's all I thought inside. Is she nuts? But do you know what? When you think about it, and I, her experience and the experience of the Dominican nuns, God always provides them. What is my experience? My experience is the same thing, if I'm going to be honest with you. God provides. When that time happens, that something goes wrong, God provides. If my parents were here raising six boys inside there, you know, and sometimes, you know, my dad would be on strike and they worry about paying that mortgage, someplace they weren't expecting, they would get a check that they weren't expecting and it would cover the mortgage. And God supplied to them. You know, did they worry a little bit? Sure they did, but God supplied to them. And what was more of their concern there? Having a house over their children's head. But see, they were focused in the right direction of realizing that the money that they were being given and they would be paid was to bring up a family. And that bringing up that family brought to them great joy. And so for them, they understood that the value of money isn't of money itself. 
but it is of you know the happiness that God calls them to inside their lives. But if they go too crazy with money and obsess upon it, what happens? They start going crazy, don't they? Because all they do is worry inside there. What's the instruction that Jesus is saying here? He says, this, will, this thus will be for the ones who store up treasure for himself, but is not rich in the matters of God. And so it is, sometimes we get more concerned about the car that we're driving, the house or the section of the town that we're living in, the vacations we're going on, the jewelry we have either on our hands or on our ears or maybe on our noses, um, more of that concern. And that is not what God wants us of, of us, to be obsessed with that. What God wants us to be is to be more concerned with others. What would God have liked this man to have done who had all that grain, surplus overflowing? He would have liked them to have distributed that to the poor. And believe me, there was a great many poor people inside the area that he lived inside. And that would have been the rich that he stored up in heaven. And so maybe today's gospel has us sit down and think, where do we stand with our money? Is it something that, you know, it owns us or do we own it? And with the money we have, do we use all that money just to take care of ourselves? Or do we have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to take care of ourselves of that money with how we show God love by caring for those who are most need?